Guys, I've got a problem. I want to play every game. When I say every game, all the games that I like, they're all over the place. I like Animal Crossing, Tenchu Wrath of Heaven, Kingdom Hearts, Resident Evil, and the list just goes on and on and on. And so today, what I want to talk to you about is as a content creator, and especially a Twitch streamer or streamer of any kind, what kinds of games should you be playing? Let's get into it. As usual, and especially with the context of this video today, I want to let you guys know that I do stream on Twitch on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Would love to have you there. See you there. Hopefully, maybe, I don't know. Links in the description below. So one thing you need to know is that by definition, I am a variety streamer, which in layman terms literally just means I do what I want, which can be liberating at times and can also be really frustrating at other times. The frustrating part around it has a lot to do with what we're talking about today, which is the question of what do I stream? It can be questions about games. It can be questions about just what you're doing on your stream. But for today, at least we're going to narrow our scope down to games specifically. So if you have been streaming for any amount of time and you would call yourself a variety streamer, then you probably have either put out a Twitter poll, you've asked different people in your community, you've even maybe quietly thought to yourself, if I'm playing the right game, if I'm not, what should I be playing? And all those things are really, really fair questions because there are three things that I think about when I am picking a game that I wanna play on my channel. And it may not always be in this exact order of priority that I think of these things, but all three of these things are considered at different points when I pick a game. So with that being said, the very first thing and most pure question you can ask yourself is, do you like the game? Will you like this game being played for the amount of time it would take to complete it? Will your viewers feel like like you are enjoying yourself. I think that's a big part of why you need to like it. I've even heard it said to me, it's just like, it does not matter what you stream as long as you like it. I wouldn't go that far, but I do think that it is a very important and integral part of how you select your games. That being said, that's kind of where my biggest problem lies, right? Is that I like so many games. I don't have a problem picking games solely based on my interests. I would honestly play PlayStation 2 games from back when I was in high school till the day was done if I had it my way. Games like Tenchu Wrath of Heaven, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, like all those things would literally be in my playlist for all of eternity. But we both know that the reason why this question is important doesn't just end with will I like it. The complication with all of that comes in with the idea of growing a channel and growing a community along with it. So when you're picking a game, absolutely, you have to like it. It'll be really easy to figure out that you don't love the game you're playing if you're not enjoying yourself while you're playing it. You literally are being watched by people while you're doing it and talking while you're doing it. So if you're not enjoying yourself, it's gonna be obvious, right? That brings us to a second point though. What about your viewer interest? Now that may seem really simple on the surface, but let me break it down in a couple different ways that might make sense. The most basic way of thinking about viewer interest is, will my community enjoy this? We're talking about existing people that have been watching your channel, the ones that maybe you picked up having played games that are more mainstream and games that are more accessible through the Twitch directory, which we'll get to in a second. But they found you and now it's up to you to find a game that is going to keep that interest for your existing viewership. This is where kind of like categories come into play. Like if you're a specific type of player, then maybe you play to your strengths, especially if you gain viewers off of those. With me, it's the worst case scenario because I play everything from Animal Crossing to Doom, which I actually think that in one day I did both of those things on the same stream. So I've made it blatantly apparent that I don't necessarily care about category gameplay. But what also is worth noting about my channel is that it is a community-driven channel. We talk a ton throughout the stream about all kinds of stuff. Having question of the days and different facts and things that just get thrown all across the chat, it's important to note that it is a community game play. So for me, the things that I'm actually really concerned about when it comes to viewer interest is yes, the game, but two, I also care about being able to chat and talk with the people that are on my channel at the same time too. 
So if you find yourself, when you pick that game, when you finally bite the bullet and say, this is gonna be the one, this is the one I'm gonna commit to for a month, a couple weeks, whatever it might be, just think about how you're gonna be able to interact with your community along with it too. Because there are some games that make it almost impossible to be able to do it. One of those games that I would argue might be tough based on some of the people I've watched before are games like Dark Souls or Sekiro. Things that honestly are very, very cool to watch, but if it's a community channel, so much of that gameplay is very focused on what's going on in the screen and you can't really have any margin to talk to your community much while you're fighting because it probably won't end well. So those are the two first things I would say, uh, which is, will you like the game? Is it gonna be something that you're gonna enjoy doing? And two, what is your viewer interest going to be with it, with your existing community members? And now the third point that I do wanna talk about, it may not matter to everybody. I say that, kind of tongue in cheek because I feel like every Twitch streamer wants to grow. Maybe not every one of you wants to get big, but I would argue that some of you do want to grow your channel. And so for that, this point is pretty crucial. And that third point is growth potential. With the game that you're going to be picking to play for that period of time, is it going to give you the ability to be found on Twitch? Now this is a very, very complicated thought process. If up to this point you've just been picking games sheerly on the first two things that we've talked about, that's okay. Just think of this next segment of things as just a different way of looking at it. So let's take a look at Twitch's directory. So this is Twitch's directory right here, right? We see that the, the highest, most viewed game right now almost has half of a million viewers inside of it. Now this is where I would like to talk about just what it's like to be a part of streaming a highly saturated game. You see, this one person right here has 112,000 people viewing them. Now, let's look at the bottom. There are so many people running zero views right now. So many. And then now we just hit the one area. Tons, tons, and tons. Not to mention, this is a competitive game. So these people down here in the bottom, which there are hundreds of them, will probably never be found because we could scroll through this for miles and miles and never find what we're looking for as far as a new streamer or somebody new that we want to communicate with. So for me, when I look at games like League of Legends, I think one, it's a competitive game, two, highly saturated, and it would be very difficult to be found. And this can be the case for a lot of different games. So when you look at the top sections here, this might be the case, especially if it's a competitive, especially shooter style game, it's very difficult to be found. But where things can get kind of interesting though, is when you pick a smaller total viewed game. For example, Ori and the Blind Forest. Look at this, only 514 viewers total in here. And this is where it gets really interesting, that right now the max person currently viewed only has 253 viewers on it, which in comparison to the over 100,000 views on League of Legends, this is a significant drop down. Why is this important? Well, let me tell you this. On the nights that Hannah and I would stream this game, Ori and the Blind Forest, we would have between 10 to 20 viewers at any given time. Almost in the top five most viewed people for this game. Why is that important? Well, in comparison to what we were talking about before with not being able to be found in League of Legends, a game that is at least being played like Ori in the Blind Forest, if we can be somewhere near the top of viewership, that can give us a means to have people discover us. It's not a perfect science and it definitely is not ideal. In fact, this is something that a lot of content creators and streamers at large have been criticizing Twitch for for a number of years. But it is something to remember when you're selecting a game. So to break it down in kind of basic terms, picking a oversaturated game may not yield you new viewers. Picking a completely off the map game that isn't watched by anybody probably won't do it either. Try and find somewhere in the middle and especially something that may give you the ability to be higher up on that view chart that way people can find you. The other thing too that I did want to bring up here uh, is this website that's actually really really cool. I found it just recently and it's been helping me out a ton just on viewing channel growth and just seeing what other people are doing and how it's working for them. This website is called Sully Gnome and Sully Gnome is a really really in-depth metric system for Twitch, Twitch growth, growth and all the metrics that go into when you stream, when you're not, the different games that went well, the different games that didn't, your viewership across everything, and the list goes on and on and on. 
So they have this really, really cool feature called Game Picker. Now Game Picker does pretty much exactly what it says on there. It's based on your current channel's growth track and everything it's done as far as performance up to this point. It looks at the games that you have played thus far and tells you based on the current environments that have been observed, what game you've played in the past that would be the best to pick up again and play for your future streams based on its analytics. So looking at mine, you can see very plain mainly that we have a wide variety of games that we've played in the past. And interestingly enough, the game that ends up being the number one suggested game for us to play is Outlast. Now, why is that especially important? Well, when you look at this metric here, it says followers per hour estimated for the channel situation that we're in right now. That is why it's suggested. It says that basically what we were talking about before, the positioning of the game in the directory of Twitch paired with the current performance that my channel has had would make this game a preferable game to play for discoverability and it even estimates half a follow an hour, which is kind of wild when you think about it. And this just as much as, you know, human psychology can be true and anything like this, this is all just a guess based on facts that they've pulled from the Twitch site itself and based on facts that they've learned from your Twitch performance up to this point. So all things considered, this may have actually made it difficult for you even more so to really pick a game. But at the very least, I wanted to show you kind of what my thought process is when we're picking a game, because it's not all straightforward. In fact, I almost disregard some of these rules simply because the viewership of things of my current community will matter more than some of the other aspects. A great example is we just kind of threw a Hail Mary and we played Metal Slug just a couple days ago. And it was definitely a whole lot of fun. And we had a great average viewer count throughout the whole stream. But why was that, do you think? For that specifically, I think it had more to do with viewer interest than it did about growth for that stream, which kind of is what I was talking about before anyways. But all things to say, I hope this video did help you in some way, shape or form about explaining maybe an effective way that you can be selecting some of your games as a Twitch streamer who's just trying to grow a little bit every now and again. <laughs> If you are a fresh Twitch streamer, maybe just getting started or maybe just a little bit tenured, I would love to know what game for you has worked the best in the past, whether it was because your community, your just interest towards it, or what you think the X factor was that made it count the most for you. And also too, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to give a like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on this channel. Thanks again, have fun, and I hope to see you on the stream. See ya.